Hello there, Jose Rodriguez back again. If you have been contemplating the purchase of a 17 inch capacity photo printer and you have been considering the Epson Sure Color P800 or possibly the Canon IPF Pro 1000, you might be wondering well, what are the advantages and disadvantages of each printer? I need to print to 17 inch capacity, but I don't know which one to buy. So stay tuned and we will discuss those options. Welcome back, and if this is the first time you land on this channel, it must be because you're interested in printing photos at home. And if that is the case, please subscribe and do not forget to click on that bell so that you never miss anything we upload. All right, so let's talk about the disadvantages and advantages of both printers. Now, by the way, the P800, I just got done printing that panorama that I'm going to give away free, and I'm going to ship it anywhere in the world. So there you go, that'll solve that problem. The reason being is I notice I have almost 250 views and only about less than 30 people actually asked to win or to try to win the panorama. So come on folks, we need more entries and I'm gonna use a sorting type program that will pick the winner. If it picks one of my comments, I'm going to go ahead and rerun the choosing of the winning comment because of course I cannot win that print you guys are gonna win that print all right so let's go ahead and talk about both of these printers so apparently this person I won't say who it is uh, wrote to uh, one of the big forums and was really pushing this one which I believe it was a pretty fair push because this is in a category all by itself just because it sits on a desktop does not mean well you know what i'm going to say right so let's go ahead and talk about these family of printers we have here the p800 out of range over there and the pro 1000 smack there next to me so we were talking about rebates of the 13 inch canon say for instance pro 10 Pro 100. In the United States, they are absolutely out of control. Some people are getting the printers for $50 net, for $0 net, and sometimes even for a negative amount net, which is absolutely nuts. But anyway, the discussion went like this. Once you get over the crazy rebates of the 13-inch carriage models, the Pro 1000 packs a lot of hardware for the money relative to Epson. That was an argument between two um, fans of either printer. But I think this one comes a little bit further ahead. And the reason being is because really in reality, this is not a desktop printer. This thing should be on a stand. This thing should be considered a floor printer. The only keeps... The only thing that keeps it from being that is it has no roll type paper adapter or feed. So anyway, let's continue. So at the given selling prices, you need to consider it is a mini floor standing wide format machine that happens to sit on a desktop. That's just what I said. Now compare it with the Epson P800. This has vacuum hold down for media handling. P800 does not. But, you know, do you really need vacuum holding? I mean, it all depends on the type of media you're trying to feed and whether it actually attempts to rise a little bit too close to the printhead nozzle plate and could possibly cause some unwanted head strikes as you're printing. So vacuum holding holds the paper nice and flat at the correct level so that the printhead is always at the correct distance above the paper surface. And of course, it provides vacuum paper handling. Let's discuss the prices first. This is retail $12.99 US. That's about, I believe, I am not entirely sure, but just under $1,000. 
the P800. So there's a discrepancy of about $300. So what do you get for $300? Well, the paper assisted advance or vacuum hold down for media handling, as he refers to it. And also the P800 has the typical nine color so-called K3, uh, meaning three, three blacks, not counting black, not counting matte black or photo black. I mean, it's either one of those blacks and two grays. But anyway, it is supposed to have a deeper D-Max. When you use the matte black as well as the photo black, your prints should be able to print a little bit deeper blacks than normally was possible with the existing ink set for these printers. This one here uses 12 ink tanks. You can see them right here lined up. We have a dedicated blue, dedicated red, okay? And then we have yellow, magenta, cyan, and light versions of magenta and cyan. Plus, let me see, one photo gray, another gray somewhere here, and a matte black and photo black, so four blacks. Of course, the Pro 1 has three grays, which gives it a, a little bit of an edge in some categories. But this has Chroma Optimizer. Right here. What is the job of the Chroma Optimizer? It is to lay down a layer of clear um, gloss type enhancer will basically eliminate any possible cause of bronzing that may be taking place. If you saw some of my pictures that I showed with the Pro 10 Signature Edition set for the Epson Pro 10 and Pro 1, I noticed that in some of the black areas there was a bit of a gloss differential and also a bit of bronzing. Chroma Optimizer, especially the OEM, which is superior to anything you could buy, even the Signature Edition ink set. Chroma Optimizer OEM is just superior. And so when you trigger the use of CO, as we call it, it will even out any differences in gloss. Now, what causes the differences in gloss? And that is the particle size and also the way that the light reflects or refracts from anything printed with those particular ink colors. Magenta is really difficult to get a nice glossy magenta. So in the case of some of the older Epson printers, I use the nine color ink set. Magenta, third party ink was pretty much matte. Okay. The only one that was glossy was that from Inkjet Mall cone color done. And uh, precision colors, again, they suffer from that magenta matte look. But now their new PCK3 HD ink set for the P800 seems to have solved that. So whatever thing that the lab did to those inks, they solved it and now it does not suffer from so much of that matte look in the anything printed with magenta in any kind of uh, proportion. So Chrome Optimizer, this one has it. The Epson R2000 uses a gloss enhancer. The Epson P400 uses a gloss enhancer as well. Now, what is the difference between, say, the Pro 1, which uses Chrome Optimizer, the Pro 10, which uses Chrome Optimizer, and the Pro 1000? According to this person, the lay down of Chrome Optimizer is superb and better than what was seen in the Pro 1 and Pro 10. All right, so that is another plus. The P800 does not have it. And again, I have seen, even with my initial OEM ink, 100% OEM ink tests, I did notice a little bit of gloss differential and a tiny bit of bronzing on certain papers. That is very, very common when it comes to pigment type inks. And it's not something that you would immediately say, oh, well, that ink set is terrible because... No, it's not. That's just the way things are. And that is why they have invented chroma optimizers and they have invented gloss optimizer for Epson printers. There is a need for that. Okay, so the printer also comes with a built-in densitometer. What? Whoever heard of a built-in densitometer in a printer of this magnitude? Basically, a pseudo-desktop printer. 
Well, this one has it. And it allows you to calibrate the printer so that it's taking into account the difference in printhead rendition, whatever the printhead can produce, the ink batch, the paper batch, and the actual printer's print engine. It will allow you to run an internal calibration using a given Canon paper, and it will bring that combination of components to a standard a standard that will match your Pro 1000 if you also calibrate it with the same paper. Regardless of whether your ink batch is from a you know, different batch by Canon, it could differ slightly. Uh, the print head, the print engine, many, many things that are involved in the production of a print by dithering a bunch of dots of color ink together. It's magical, folks. So any differences that may exist between machines will be brought to a standard when you do the internal calibration. You can't do that with any of the other printers that I have here because this thing comes with that built in. And again, remember the difference was $300? That by itself is worth it in my book. So. The built-in desktopometer that maintains ink jetting characteristics on paper that takes care of the ink media and printhead variations. So that's basically what I stated earlier. This aspect is lost on many unless they are fastidious with their color output. So most people will not care, okay? Most people will simply say, well, I'll just profile my printer to a specific paper and that will work. That will work with your printer. But then if you give me that profile, that you generated, it may not produce an identical print from my printer using your profile. Now, on your printer using your profile, yeah, that is specifically made for your printer. So when I use that profile on my printer, it may not produce the same matching results. Now, had both of us calibrated our printer internally, then our printers as an entity would be identical, identical outputs. When you create a profile on my printer or your printer and we exchange that profile, it should be identical, okay? Because we brought, initially, we brought our printers to a known standard by internally calibrating them. So that that is a major thing to do. If you're gonna share Pro 1000 profiles that you yourself make, you better tell the person receiving those profiles that they better calibrate that printer internally for that given paper. Otherwise, you, you know, your profile may not be as superb as you think it is when you trade it with someone else. This is not a printer for starting out with. Yeah, don't even consider it, okay? Go with a PA-100, go with a Pro-1 possibly. That's even a little bit too high for most users. Pro-10, ideal. Pro-100, ideal printer. Uh, P600, awesome printer. P400, if you do nothing but color photography and you want pop and beautiful colors, P400 from Epson. But if you decide to get this bad girl right here, uh, be ready, be ready because this is not a printer for the weak of stomach or heart. So built-in ink agitation on their internal ink tanks. What does that mean? This printer not only has the cartridges in the front, but there's also internal ink tanks. The cartridges feed ink into those tanks. Those tanks feed ink into the printhead. I assume, just by looking at the external shape and construction of the printhead, that the printhead also has internal dampers. So that's three places where ink is being stored at all times. The ink is being agitated. I don't know how, but it's being agitated internally. So that is amazing. Uh, I don't know of any other printer in this category, this family of printers that will do that. Want to keep track of your ink use? There is software that will work with this printer. And also most of the IPF series from Canon will be able to run with the so-called accounting manager software that will keep track of the ink use on every single print, every single multiple print job. And there's also a way of pulling out the data that will tell you not only what 
amount of ink you use to actually produce prints, but also total combined ink that you use during the use of that printer, say for a month, including waste ink generated. Uh-oh, yeah, that's the part that we hate. This printer will run maintenance cycles. And I have yet to figure out if there's any kind of a logic to it. Uh, apparently, between every print that you make, there's a tiny, tiny, tiny expulsion of ink or head wipe where some ink is wiped off the head. It amounts to a fraction of a milliliter per print. So this is not a printer where you want to run a hundred small prints. No, this is a printer for running individual large prints not batches of prints unless you're going to sell those prints and make money because after each batch every single print that you ran also created a little bit of waste okay so if you're going to run lots of prints make sure they're big okay that way the proportion of ink wasted between prints is minuscule compared to the amount of ink that was used to generate say a 22 by 17 print okay this is not a printer for printing little four by sixes. No, it's not. It's not very economical. It's expensive to, to use. Yes, it is. Uh, 12 times $60 each, but we can refill these. And I, I'm sure you have seen my videos on that already. You know, there are ways to use this printer more economically. It's not something that can be used economically. No, it can be used more economically than if you just basically ran straight OEM inks. And if you do not print at least every couple of days, yeah, this will be an expensive printer because it will continually do cleaning cycles for you. That's how it stays clock free. Lucky for us, there are internal waste ink carts that can be exchanged by the user. And so that saves you from ever having to take this bad girl right here to the repair center to have the internal ink pads that exist on the lesser printers exchanged and have the system reset. So no worries about that. You simply replace it with another $15 waste ink cart and you are good to go. Keep refilling these with good OEM ink from 700 ml cartridges. Initially the investment is huge, but it will pay off in the long run because you will be able to not only print with nothing but OEM, or if you choose to print with the Signature Editions ink set, you will be replacing blue, yellow, and red, and that will bring you up to OEM levels, period. So again, you'll be saving a lot of money and uh, still maintain the same color reproduction of OEM. What can you say? Okay, so now for the shortcomings, and there are some. The only shortcoming is that a Canon Pro 1000 is lacking panorama printing. P800, on the other hand, can print up to 129 inches by 17. Good Lord, I couldn't fit this on my wall, you know. So the one we just made is 40 total paper length, 40 by 17 wide. And we printed a uh, 16 by 39 inch image on it. And uh, yeah, the thought of being able to print something three times that, under 129 inches still, say 120 inches long. Are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. So yeah, you're able to do that with a P800. Not at all with this, not at all. Okay, the largest you can print officially is 17 by 22. Unofficially, you can actually create a custom paper size 17 by 25.5, I think it is. And yeah, so there is some limitations on that. What they want you to do, of course, is jump up to the Pro 2000, which is able to print panoramas and also has dual roll support. Ooh, baby, that is amazing. Okay, so the simply put, the Epson P800 has been out teched by a large margin within the same product space meaning the category of printer in the 17 inch capacity. He proceeds by saying not just tech, but in actual results. Uh oh, so he's saying that the results are better on the Pro 1000 than the, say, the output for the P800. 
that that's debatable okay that is debatable and it, it all depends on the type of image uh, images that contain difficult blues will be a piece of cake on the pro 1000 but if your image is a black and white I don't think you're gonna see much difference between the two again on matte paper oh boy the p800 will just print gorgeous images same thing here on glossy papers papers with a luster burrito papers semi-gloss satins this probably has the edge because of that chroma optimizer he also states that this is not a machine meant to print just once a week it wants to work it does waste more ink than normal printers but when you play in this sphere you cannot expect high maintenance yeah uh, normally canon printers have a schedule number of hours where it will generate a preemptive cleaning cycle if you don't use your printer for say 60 plus hours it will generate a cleaning cycle before the print even starts to print so the solution of course is to just print under that limitation and so you know you can print whatever you want it doesn't matter and also check will use a minuscule amount of ink and it will defeat it will reset that counter again back to zero so say every 59 hours if you can catch yourself yeah you'll defeat it and then there are other cycles they all double okay so 60 120 you know two two uh what is it 40 and 480 so the longer you wait the more ink it will use during the cleaning cycle pro 100 is a little bit less wasteful pro 10 is semi pro 1 is kind of wasteful and this one is a killer I, I tell you you better have a good source of ink but the output just outweighs everything okay once you see the output from this machine you're going to say oh well i'll put up with all of that but again it's something that you have to really super super commit to otherwise it's just not for someone who went from a small 84 printer and then all of a sudden jump to something like this it's just not going to work it's like culture shock and then he says by the way make sure that you set up the pro 1000 on something really sturdy it also has built-in inertia sensors this machine needs to be level it does not like shaking surfaces when it prints do not move it when it is powered up or else you'll be sorry very very sorry and a very expensive mistake yeah they're referring to the fact that there's a level indicator underneath and it also has inertia sensor in other words if this was on a weak table and just the moving of the print head back and forth causes that to move remember there are internal ink compartments you can have a little wave action going on there all of that is detrimental so you don't want that you want a solid table this puppy is going to sit here until it decides to go bye bye okay so i'm not moving this ever so this is this home from now on until the end of time so again if you try to move it while it is on it will trigger an ink dump and basically all that is that all the ink that has been drawn into the system will begin to be dumped into various two to three waste ink carts it thinks you want to send it to the repair center and before you send it to the repair center it has to be drained of all the ink which means what you better have a brand new set of inks when you get it back maybe they will demand that you provide them with a brand new set of inks if you do not they will charge you for it so yeah lots of lots of little things that are not for the uh non-committed or possibly a person who is you know at a amateur level in printing at home you need to begin with a more forgiving printer like i said a pro 100 from canon is ideal pro 10 is ideal the epson sure color p600 p400 again ideal printers to begin learning the process oh but i want to learn on a big expensive printer no no that's a very expensive proposition it's like getting you know a two hundred thousand dollar automobile and you haven't even gotten your license yet you need to learn on a regular sedan get yourself a nice solid sedan learn how to drive gain a couple of years experience then if you have the money 
you go ahead and you buy that expensive car. Same thing with printers. Learn the process, learn color management, learn everything that pertains to color printing, which applies to every single printer out there. It's not just for this one. It's not just for that one. It's not just for that one. The basic information you learn will apply to this, to that one, and to everything that I have on those racks. Okay, so that is it. Interesting uh, bit of information here. Um, again, of course, it's a little bit biased. I mean, this person loves the Pro 1000 and also the Pro 1. And so, of course, I expected to see that bit of bias, but that's fine, you know. I'm in love with both my P800 and the Pro 1000. I also love my Pro 1. I love all my printers. What can I tell you? All right, so that is it. I will hope to see you on Saturday evening on the live broadcast, 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I moved it back one hour, and that accommodated a lot of people in the western part of Europe and also in Australia. It's a little bit earlier in the morning in some of the areas in Australia, but that helped a lot to bring some people on board so that they could interact with me live. I will be choosing the winner, so go to watch my video. You don't have to watch the whole video, just go there and enter your plea to win that print, okay? I need to have more than just 30 out of a couple of hundred views total. Again, that makes no sense. What, nobody wants a nice, long 17 by 40 panorama? I don't think so. I think that's not the case. So go watch that video. You might learn something. And I show you three different ways to print a panorama, how to prepare the image, and so on. And then I show you the magic actually taking place on the P800. All right, that is it. Thank you so much again. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And by the way, next week, starting on Thursday, I will be gone until the following Monday. I arrive early Monday morning back from Orlando, Florida. And um, maybe I'll take a little rest and uh, get back into it again. All right, so during that week, I will have my tablet. I will answer questions. I will answer comments. But of course, there will not be any videos being posted. So that is it. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, happy printing, everyone, and bye-bye. Oh, by the way, I got told that I was boring. Am I? <laughs>